brought up um, Darren Wilson during Big 12 media days. How has he been able to come here and have such a big impact so quickly? I think he fits our culture, number one. He's a kid that um, has come in and really not just been a, a new guy that, that's just you know trying to find his way and he I feel like the first day he came here he really fit in with our guys and fit in with you know their beliefs and what they're about and so you know that part alone it, it, it is obvious to us as, as coaches and obvious to the players you know when you come in like that and and you know I think that's what he showed early on. What do you remember from that first day when you saw him? Um, well you know, he had a, a, an official visit that was pretty late on in the process, so it felt like it went from that to him being here pretty fast. Um, and it was going to be a time where it was new, and, you know, it's a Juco kid, and, you know, he's coming from, a, you know, even even a place that's a little bit different, not expecting to, you know, he wasn't even expecting to go and play at a college program uh, this year. He thought he had a, another year of Juco, and then he would figure out, you know, what his opportunities would be after that. So. Uh, it, it moved kind of fast for him. I think when he showed up here, he was just eager to learn, eager to work in the weight room. You know, our strength staff had good things to say about him. So all those things, when you come in like that, ready to work, uh, it gives you a chance. How big of an impact is it to realistically expect from him this year? It's early, and you're new in an offense. And so, you know, for, for him and obviously for LaMichael, uh, I think part of it, they're learning, number one, how we do things, how we practice, uh, running on and off the field. You know, sprint from every drill. That stuff is new. It's new for anybody. It's new for a freshman coming in. Even for an older guy, that stuff is new. So, you know, they're learning those building blocks first and, and obviously learning install of an offense and learning how we do things on the field. You know, that's a whole lot on their plate as well. And so um, we know those things and, and we're bringing them along the right way. I think Coach Manning has a really good plan with how he's putting in the offense, even, you know, in fall camp. Um, but I think we'll get those guys ready to go where, where you know, come, come fall, come August 31st, those guys are ready to play. Darren is one of the fastest guys on the team. Coming from Kennedy, I guess that tells you something. Is that something that jumped off the page for him? How much is that critical aspect yeah, when you got size and strength and all that out there? Speed helps. I mean, it's a trait that obviously you like at every position, uh, at the receiver position, for sure. It helps to, to have guys that are able to run. So, yeah, that's good. The faster we can get as a team, the faster we can get as a receiver group, the better we're going to be. You know, I haven't raced them yet, but. Um, <laughs> You know, I think he's pretty fast, but we got some fast guys. Uh, we, we do have the fastest 400 runner in the <laughs> history of Iowa, and when you see him run, it looks pretty different. Um, you know, Kane, Johnny Lang, those guys are fast. Joe Skates, like that dude can run. Landon Akers, he can really run. We don't do, um, you know, the fastest man contest. Maybe that's something that will be on our agenda for after the season, but, um, but no, he's a fast kid. The, we got some fast guys. There's been a lot of talk about you know guys trying to compete for reps. How do you guys create pressure-filled situations to figure out who can? You can't put them in a game right now. But how do you create situations to see who shines? The good news about camp is there's always going to be adversity. There's never been a fall camp before where there's not a, a bad day for the offense or for the defense. And so, I think that's your best chance of seeing how guys are going to respond in pressure moments when when something doesn't go your way when. You know, there's an interception that happens on the first play of the, the drive. And, you know, how are these guys going to battle back? And so I think those, you know, it's part of the game. It, it happens naturally when you get out there. And the good news for us is we compete with a good defense every day. So there's going to be situations where, man, you feel like you got stopped on a rep and you got to come back and battle back the next rep. And, and you know, Coach Manning said today, offensive football is different. You can go out there and you, you got to have poise. You can get stopped for three straight possessions and, and feel like things aren't going well and then end up scoring on the next seven possessions and feel really good about the day. So those guys having poise and, and having maturity, it helps obviously in our group having Deshante who's been through it. He's had adversity. He's had adversity in his own personal world. He's had adversity on the field. So he's good at just, you know, keeping a uh, even keel perspective throughout a practice, throughout a game. And, and I think he helps those guys, at least in our receiver group. What do you want to see from Sean and Joe and Jalen to you know, kind of earn some more reps than they've had the past couple of years? Yeah, I think consistency is the word. You know, those guys have all had great moments. They've all practiced well. They've all practiced hard. Um, consistency is really important. I, I think those guys are, what you see is that they're straining to get better every day and they are growing and getting better. Um, when they get their opportunities in the fall, we want to see them be consistent. We want to see them in the place that the quarterback expects them to be, uh, playing with the effort that we expect, whether they're getting the ball and, and the play is called for them or whether they're away uh, running a 
seam down the middle of the field just to clear safety out of there. They have to have consistency in those things. And um, I think they have so far. That's the exciting part is that, again, they know that. They know that that's what we're looking for. And, and I think they're straining to do that. How has Landon been looking at the ham? Good. Um, you know, he's a guy that's real versatile. He, he can play outside. He obviously has done some stuff for us inside so far. Uh, he's fast running through the middle of the field. So uh, I'm excited to see him, to see him grow and develop and, and just figure out more of the nuances. Obviously, there's more people in the box. And so figuring out how to navigate through linebackers, reading coverages, there's a lot that you got to do. There's a lot we require that guy to do. Um, but he's a, I mean, he's a learner. He's, he's in there. You walk by our receiver meeting room, I think, every single day, and he's in there studying film, trying to learn, trying to grow in the playbook. So uh, he'll get there faster than most because of that. Um, is he one of the best route runners you have? Well, it was the first time getting to really see him in a while, you know, just because in the spring he was, he was doing stuff, but, you know, wasn't necessarily full tilt with, with having that shoulder. So, yeah, it's impressive just because of the power and the strength that he has. He's a, he's a really explosive guy, and, and that comes to life when he's running his routes and when he's – discipline and what he's doing. I mean, again, when we ask you to do something as a coach and when you're able to, you know, hear what we're saying, be coached up on it and go and do it, that's always impressive. And that's what, again, with Landon, I think that I saw even on the first day, it's like, man, this guy has grown a whole lot. You know, there, there's certain techniques that we're coaching them and, and that we think will, will help them. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting coaching receiver uh, in this day and age because there's a lot of uh, really good YouTube videos and, you know, Instagram um, accounts out there that are, you know, teaching people how to play receiver. And, you know, there's some of that stuff that's good, uh, but you also have to filter through some of the stuff as well. And so um, I think those guys just, just refining their craft and, and doing, you know, I think for receiver, you got to always understand, man, the quarterback is relying on you to be in a certain place at a certain time. So, you can do a whole bunch of extra stuff with your route, but if you're not where the quarterback expects you to be, you're not going to get the ball. And so we rely on that guy, so we got to be where he's expecting us to be. We feel like we've had some guys that have shown up that have made plays. Um, yeah, I think there's multiple guys that have shown that, that they can be relied on. Not only getting a bomb, but you know, I think the question we ask ourselves is, who's getting the ball on third and six? Who are we designing routes you know, that we feel confident throwing to that's, that are going to make difficult catches? That's that's probably the question that we're trying to get answered. You mentioned the Michael and it being his first year in the offense, but how big was it just to get another guy that has been there before, kind of at the college level? It's helpful again, once again, getting the guy that, that cares about being a part of the right culture. I think the, the biggest thing for him is, is he wanted to be a part of a place that um, had a chance to go and, and chase something. And I think he felt like he was comfortable with that here. And so having a guy that has experience, it's always good to add that into a room. Having an older guy, the young guys can, can sit there and ask questions. Hey, what have you done in this situation before? Again, that's been through adversity. That stuff's always really good. The more of those guys you have in your room, and, and obviously you'll get that as the room gets older and guys grow up, you'll get that. Um, but it's great to have that in room with Michael. How what much reteaching does he undergo? Obviously first? terminology is totally different. Yeah. You know, that, that's going to be with, you know, anytime you're getting a guy from another program, anytime you're getting a freshman that's coming in, terminology is going to be completely new. So, yeah, that's, that's something he's transitioning into. Uh, it also is, you know, when you go six months, him not being in spring ball, you know, he said it today, him not being in spring ball is, is never easy as well. So just getting, you know, back used to being on the football field, being in pads, being, a, you know, on a team where you're running around and you're catching the ball from quarterbacks, you know, that part I think has all been good. So it's all new and it's all, but again, the best part about fall camp is you get to go out there every day. You get to refine, you get to go there, watch it on the videotape, watch and see how you can get better at your techniques and, and, and what we're asking them. Is he do. running routes or is he running to, to open spaces? Because I think Hakeem last year was running you know, somewhat to open spaces. I think we would teach it as we're running routes. Um, I don't know. <laughs> running to open spaces routes is what I would say. Okay. Yeah, we, again, we, we got a specific way that we're trying to teach stuff. I think Tom, um, you know, and just installing the offense is really clear with those guys on what we're expecting them to do. And, and we try to eliminate as much gray area as possible. Um, you know, so that, that would be what I would say. Just running routes out is there. there internal competition between, increased internal competition between you and the tight ends, given two upperclassmen and the, I mean just they're vying for targets too nope nope there's none at all <laughs> honestly it's like something I totally like don't agree with ever is that like the biggest thing that I would feel like I'm trying to bring is like the most selfless we're for whatever uh whatever personnel is on the field mm -mm, I totally disagree like it's 
it like oozes from our pores that I like can't take it because again I know the the perspective from the outside looking in is always man a receiver group is this you got prima dons you got guys who care about this guys who want to get their catches guys who on the sideline if they don't make the play they're pulling off their helmet they're yelling at the quarterbacks I disagree with all of that and so I believe in a group that is totally unselfish that is willing to do whatever it takes whether it's run down the field and score a touchdown whether it's run down the field and get a guy behind us a touchdown whether it's blocking somebody putting our hat on somebody whether it's running down on special teams and tackling somebody that's what I believe in. And so if, if anybody is not a part of that, um, it's going to be really hard to play in our receiver room. It's going to be really hard to play at Iowa State because Coach Campbell is the same exact way. So, no. I, if a tight end scores a touchdown or a receiver scores a touchdown, they still put up six points on the board, which I'm for that every time. How big of an impact can be just having Brock on campus now for a full year working with the guys? Huge impact because what he is is a highly competitive dude who is constantly pushing for guys to get better. And so a rising tide raises all boats, that's Brock Purdy. Uh, he raises up the group around him. He expects a whole lot every day when he goes out there. He, there is no such thing as having an off day. There's no such thing as having a bad rep. Like that dude demands greatness. And so the people around him, receivers included, offensive line, running backs, tight ends, like a rising tide raises all boats, like that's Brock Purdy.